When I first got on a bike for the first time since 1998, I just wanted to ride a few miles without the saddle cutting me in half like a cheese grater, all in the hope of it helping my fitness and weight loss journey. That was my only ambition when I bought a bike several years ago, which I subsequently sold because it did cut me in half. Then eventually, having come to my senses, I bought a Zwift bike, a Watt bike, jumped on Zwift and rode indoors. There we go, there we go. I put a jump on because it's about five degrees. I'm getting really hot now. When I realised that I actually enjoyed cycling, I bought myself a decent gravel bike and I signed up for the London to Brighton bike ride. Okay, here we go guys, we're coming into Brighton. And Ryan, congratulations, Seagulls. Because I knew that if I still enjoyed it after riding 64 miles, then I would keep doing it. That was the reason I signed up to London to Brighton. However, there was one thing on my London to Brighton adventure that I didn't expect or plan for hills <sighs> get some pace up and keep it up <sighs> now back in pre-1990 a when i used to ride around on my mountain bike with my friends i used to live in south east london then i grew up and moved out and i lived in east london the only hills I ever see are the speed bumps in the 20 mile an hour zone. However, I will say that I unexpectedly discovered that I really enjoy hills. I don't know why I'm not built like Pogaccia, but I do love them. I love racing on them in Zwift. <laughs> and I love to try and ride up them in real life. And then the icing on the cake, the cherry on the bakewell, that I watched this year's Tour de France, was completely gripped by it. I was addicted to it. I got Tour de France fever and my favorite bits were the hill climbs. I waited for them with excitement. A few weeks ago, I rode up Box Hill in the pouring rain. I made a video about that. The way I see it, if I'm having fun and have a smile on my face whilst at the same time being smashed in the face by gale force winds and driving rain, then I must really love hills. That's how I see it. Jesus, that wind. For the first time in about 30 years, I felt like a teenager again, racing his mates to the shops. Except this time, I was racing myself up a hill with an invisible time on my Garmin watch. I have unfinished business with Ditchland Beacon, or as it's commonly become known in my house, Ditchland Beacon, because that's how it made me feel. Like a bit. Reading my new favorite book, hang on. 100 greatest cycling climbs it's a real page turner page 47 describes ditchland and beacon as and i quote the hill all non-cyclists dread this hill feels like an initiation ritual something to be to be welcomed into the cycling fraternity the book says that it's a climb that's forced more riders off their bike than any other mainly because it's only 10k before the end of the london to brighton bike ride Okay, we've arrived at our location. We're in Asda car park because we needed the loo. Tracy's just buying some water now. Well, we're just outside Brighton. So I've come here today to do the Ditchland Beacon climb. So I had a look online and the Ditchland Beacon climb is number six on the top 10 hardest climbs in the UK. To put this into context, my book gave Box Hill a three out of 10. I also misunderstood what three and six out of 10 meant. When I read this, and I read online as well, I thought it meant it was the sixth toughest climb in the UK. <laughs> so when I talk about this being a really hard climb, being the sixth toughest climb in the UK, please ignore me at this point, because I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just pleased to be on a bike riding. Which probably says more about the climbs in the UK being that I don't think, I don't remember Ditchland Beacon, oh, this is famous last words, I was about to say I don't remember Ditchland Beacon being that hard. It was really tough, so I did Ditchland Beacon in the summer of this year, so a few months ago now, when I did the London to Brighton bike ride, and I wasn't able to get up it in one go. I actually had to stop twice, the first time because I fell off at the bottom. Oh, shit. Because oh. I went into it in the wrong gears, my my chain froze, got caught, and then I got halfway and I just burnt out. 
and I had to get off the bike for a little bit. Then I was a bit hesitant about starting on a really steep part of the climb. So I was on a steep bit and I wasn't far from the top, but I had to stop. So that's kind of the story that I've got. So it, it has beaten me. So I'm hopeful, fingers crossed, that uh, today I'm gonna be able to tackle it. Now, Ditchland Beacon beat me on my London to Brighton bike ride in the summer of this year, only a few months ago. So I've said that a few times now, but it's important for the context of this video. When I reached it and with only six or seven miles left of the ride, on the London to Brighton, I fell off at the start and then had to stop halfway to walk as it was just too steep for me. When I fell off at the start, it completely knocked my confidence. Okay guys, oh, I've had my first fall with the bike ride and I've only got flipping 13K left. All right, we're okay, we're okay. All right. I'm overthinking it, I just need to tackle the, uh, the climb. So as I ramble on in the car about how tough Ditchland Beacon is after having literally just said how I don't remember it being that hard, yeah, it was really hard at the time, especially after completing like 50 odd miles of cycling. I'm hoping that my new cycling fitness levels have improved enough that allows me to conquer this tough climb. So I've got the bike in the back. I'll quickly show you. Ready to go? Yeah. What's wrong? That was not a pleasant, to pleasant toilet experience. Because of the queue. All right, are you ready? Are you ready to? And there's no lock on the door of the one toilet that's working. Put your hand out. Did you to have stop to do? Someone. Did you have to do that thing where you put your feet up against the door? No, because the door was ten foot away from me. All right, you ready for Ditch and Beacon? Yeah. Should we do a recce first? Yeah, come on, let's do this. It's nice views. It's lovely. Now, I should give you some stats. I'm not really known for stats in my videos. It's more about how just having fun and getting on with it, really. But the climb is 1.5 kilometers long. It's an average gradient of 9%. There's a maximum gradient in two sections of 15%. And as we drove down the hill to the bottom, doing a recce, it felt steeper than I actually remember, if that's even possible. It's got a few windy bits, but it's not really any way you can stop. However, it is really, really narrow, and it was a really, really busy road. That is spicy, because there are some bits there, there are some bits there that are really, really punchy. Like, enough to completely lose momentum. Yeah. And then have to unclip. I'm gonna have to climb this with a line of cars constantly wanting to pass me. Not only is my climbing ability gonna be needed, but my, also my ability to control my wobble from side to side, as I do like to do that when I'm tired and or pushing it out of the saddle. I'm hoping it's because I'm pushing it out of the saddle, not because I'm knackered. We've just done a recce down Ditchland Beacon it's steeper than I remember, and that's in the car, and the car never makes it look anywhere near as steep as when you're on the bike. So this isn't a small climb. I mean, I know if you live in the Pyrenees, it's a small climb, but I don't live in the Pyrenees. I live near London. So I'm gonna leave it a few minutes for you to get up. Like, I'll just wait here for a few minutes. The cleats are really stiff to come out, so oh, I need to because make... they're new ones? Yeah, I know. Okay, love you. Right. Love you. Okay, all right, we're on the road. Definitely not the right gear for the road. Oh, okay, I see what they mean about big ring. I get it. I'm there. I'm learning. I forgot my helmet. I went back for it. Don't worry guys, let's ignore that. Please ignore the helmet mistake. I was nervous. I'm used to racing on Zwift where obviously I don't wear a helmet. So let's just move on from this error and agree that I am a complete donut. Let's just pretend that never happened. Okay. So the last time I, oh, hang on. Let's get my cleat in, shall I? That's it. Okay, the last time I did this was during London to Brighton and, and then it was closed roads. Today, it appears everyone is driving up and down Ditchland Beacon. Right, I just want to make sure I've got the right ring. Oh, hang on, that's not the right, that's the right ring. I'm just going to glide up to it slowly and then it's speed and power. I think it was raining a little bit, spitting this morning, raining last night, so the ground pretty wet but I'm an expert cyclist now so I got this okay I can already feel the gradient am I my maximum what is my maximum that's my maximum okay I don't need that right now oh, it will take me half hour to do this hundred meters 
As we approached the climb, I was now 100 meters away and knew that in reality, I probably only had one max effort attempt or maybe two if I paced myself. I had two options, go for it full throttle or pace myself and then do it again a second time. I think I've only got one shot at this. I won't know until I get to the top, but I think this is gonna take everything I've got. This isn't messing about this climb and this is the start now. This is me, a max effort, all out assault of the beacon. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Time to make Ditchland Beacon my Bitchland baby. That sounded funny in my head. skyrocketed so when you start this it kicks but almost immediately and then plateaus and then kicks again Now the climb starts with a small kick. It starts as it means to go on. I remember being completely caught off guard last time and it hit me like a brick wall. I'd also just recovered from falling off my bike. This time, my plan is simple. Spin like a lunatic and stand up when I can. Max effort, baby. Now I will say post edit, this bit cracks me up because in my head at the time when I was riding, I felt like Pogaccia sprinting up a mountain in Tour de France. However, on the car GoPro looking at it in edit, it looks like I'm on a slow amble to the shops. Every old leaf is turning over, turning over. I'm weaving all over the place. Heart rate's at 170. There's a kick here. Ah. Ah. Wrong gear. I need my Zwift fan. I'm boiling. Tracy then got to the top, turned around and came back down for another camera run. There were parts of the climb where the hill kicked hard. I stood up for these sections and powered over them. Now at this point in the climb, I hit the false peak, the point in the road where the climb apparently looks like it's ending, probably because I've climbed it before, but it didn't look to me like it was ending at all. If anything, it now felt like it was getting a lot steeper. This is the false peak. Now I did have cars coming up really close behind me and revving their engines. I don't know why motorists do that. I can't go anywhere, but it did make me want to go faster. The Britishman inside me also wanted to get out of the way, which if there was a side in, I probably would have, but there wasn't, so I just powered on. All I really need's a little motivation to pull you from the other side. What I need to show you is my obligation. Okay, this is the hardest you bit. You kick and scream, you're begging, please. But once 
Start. I forgot to press stop. Nine forty three. You said it'd take about half an hour. Half an hour. You said that. No, you said that. And that's it. I climbed the beacon in nine minutes and 43 seconds. So just under 10 minutes. I don't know if that's a good time. Probably isn't. I'm not fussed either way. I'm thrilled to have completed it. 9.43. Oh, I didn't quite get... I can't speak. <laughs> Was it as bad as you remembered? Yeah. That's pretty horrible. Yeah, but you didn't have to get off and walk like you did last time. No. There was no way I was walking. I wasn't. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't having to walk bad. I couldn't walk. It takes me... Take you longer to it takes walk me it. it takes me three people holding me to get my cleats out turn it off uh, what should i say i need to do an ending i'm not doing it again no i'm taking that time <laughs> uh, there was no was... disasters no no i didn't fall off are you happy with my performance tracy yeah do you think i, I should do it again good. no 9 43 i don't know if that's good or bad i mean i'm, assu I'm assuming it's not well it's not record breaking because the fastest was 354 yeah but <clears throat> I'd take that as a good run. I'm heavy, so I'm not a fast climber. No. Are you happy with it? I'm, do you know what I am happy with? I'm happy with the fact that I'm, I'm okay with my gears now. Because when I did London to Brighton, it was only when I got to the bottom of the beacon that I realised I can change into the big ring. Oh. I didn't use any of these gears. I only stayed on this side. I don't know if you've noticed, i just show this to camera. I also took off the bags. I took off the bags and in true Pagatcha style, as he did in Tour de France, he didn't want to carry the water bottle. I emptied my full water bottle, took it off. Thanks for watching this video. There's people in the car behind me looking at me. You've got to so, do one, two, three, four, and five now. If that was number six, I don't think I want to do one to five. I mean, the problem with one to five is they're either in Cornwall or in Scotland or Lake District. This one was only an hour Cheddar and a half. Cheddar Gorge is um, Somerset. Yeah. This one was only an hour and a half from my house. Only. Yeah, well, compared to driving to the Lake District. So, yeah, Ditchland Beacon, done. It annoyed me that it beat me on the London to Brighton. It hasn't beaten me today. That took everything then. Yeah, so you, you haven't got it in you to do it faster. I mean, we could always come back another day, couldn't we? Yeah. I had a great time doing it. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It's a really, really fun climb. Tracy was brilliant with her filming, and I got to ride my bike IRL which is always a win. I enjoyed that. That was really good. Thanks for watching. See you in next week's video. Cheers, Tracy. Did you, hang on, press record. It is. Did you do a good job in the filming? I think so. 
good job. Now I do have another new cycling challenge I'm planning before the weather gets all Dickendian. We are in November, so I'm running out of time. Um, and it is quite a big ride, so it's not one of them things that I can just quickly go out and do. So if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing so you get notified when I eventually upload that video. So that's it, Box Hill and Ditchland Beacon completed. I now need to keep on working my way through this book as I conquer the 100 greatest climbs in the UK. And then maybe one day, even taking on Mont Ventoux, and of course the climb that's inspired me the most, the greatest pixelated mountain of them all, but the real life version, Alp du Huez. See you in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching. And I can't believe that I've just said that I want to climb Alp du Huez in real life. I've just done Box Hill and Ditchland Beacon, and I now think I'm on the tour. <laughs>